Hello and welcome to the third video in the quadcopter building for beginners series. This is actually the eighth quadcopter build that I've done on the channel. The first two back about two years ago were actually designed for beginners and all the rest have been showcasing different frames, flight controllers and technology. But in this series, series eight, I'm going back to where it all began and talking about how to build a quadcopter with modern components. So if you found this video and you haven't started watching the series from the beginning, I'd heartily recommend go back to the beginning of the playlist and watch them in sequence. And it's really designed for those of you that haven't ever built a quadcopter before, and it's going to go through each of the steps and talk about each of the things you need to consider when they're making the choices for how you want to build your first quadcopter. Now, back when I did the first couple of quadcopter build series, a lot of people were selling kits where you got all the components that you needed in the kit, and that made the selection of the components very straightforward. These days, that's really fallen out of vogue, so it's up to you as an individual to go and find the components to put together that's going to go together and make a quad. And unfortunately, making bad choices or poor choices at this point when you're picking all the components can make the difference between having a really fun, exciting build experience or having a complete nightmare that leaves you nothing but frustrated. So in this video and the next video, I'm going to talk about how I've selected some of the components on the desk and talk about some of the things you need to think about to make sure that the parts that you're picking for your build are going to be the right ones. Again, I'll put links in the description for the stuff I'm using here if you want to follow along, but the process that we're going to go through and the thoughts processes that we're going to talk about are identical irrespective of the kind of quad that you want to build for your first one. First thing we're going to talk about is the flight controller. The flight controller is the brain that sits in the middle of the quadcopter that does the vast majority of the hard work. It runs flight control software, so typically most of these things are coming pre-installed with beta flight these days and will fly pretty much straight out the box. You've got to connect it to the ESCs, a radio receiver, camera and video transmitter, and we'll do all that in a couple of videos time. But choosing the right flight controller can make a huge difference to how well the build goes and how it all flies at the other side. Now I've got quite a few flight controllers that I'm a particular fan of. Everybody has their own particular ones that they love and ones they've had bad experiences with. I'm going to be using a Hollybro Kakute in this particular build, but I like the Kakute. It was one of the first controllers to have this vibration dampened IMU. This little chip in the middle is the bit that actually feels the movement of the quadcopter. And by having it on a little foam pad means that some of the vibration that will happen out in the arms from the props and motors and the frame itself as you're flying along won't all get translated into the flight controller and potentially cause it to become confused. Other ones I really like, the CL Racing F4S, I've used that before, that's a great flight controller. Things like the Brain FPV RE1 I've used, uh, the Brain FPV Radix is the new version of that, things like the Beta Flight flight controller. There are loads of different ones and I tend to be very careful picking them when I do my builds here on the channel to try and pick stuff that's going to work and work well. So my advice here is pick a flight controller that's got great reviews, that has lots of information around in places like YouTube, and pick one now that has an F4 based processor. So the number of the processor, the higher the number, the more powerful the processor is. There's wide and varied support for F3 and F4 based processors, but the F4 based processors are a little bit more powerful, so they can run the software and some of the additional new features that are coming out with more headroom. And that means that if you do buy an F4 processor now, it should last you a lot longer because it will continue to support the flight control software longer than something like an F3 might. F7 is starting to come out, but at the moment for a first build, I would say go for F4, loads of choice of boards and lots and lots of support for them too. The big tip here is I would always download the manual for the flight controller that you're interested in and have a quick read through. If you can make sense of the manual and it's written for somebody to put the flight controller into a model with the minimum amount of fuss and hassle, that's a really good sign for a first build. Some of the manuals are written by the people who design the flight controllers who haven't put any real thought into making it easy for you to wire everything up. And again, that can be the difference between having a nice easy build and a real sticky one. Last tip I'd give you, have a look at flight controllers that have the majority of the soldering pads on the top. I like to install the flight controller into the middle of the frame and then connect everything to it. And at that point, if I have pads underneath that I have to try and get to, it just gets blooming complicated. 
So now we've talked about the flight controller, let's spend a bit of time talking about the motor, prop and ESCs. And why am I talking about the motor and prop? Well, they are a system, they go together. You can't just put any prop on any motor and you can't just put any motor on any ESC. But the prop and motor, in my humble opinion, is the best place to start. Now, it used to be that back in the day we had very limited choice for multi-rotor motors. Now we are completely overwhelmed by choice and it's changing all the time as everyone tries to differentiate and bring out something a little bit different. I'm not going to talk an awful lot about what the numbers mean on the motors themselves. Uh, the first number, something like a 2205 or a 2307, tends to be talking about the physical size of the motor and the KV number, and that's typically going to be something like a 2300 or a 2700, is going to be talking about how fast it spins. I'll put a link in the description to that video on what the motor's numbers mean. But the bottom line is, is that we now have lots of choice and lots of very good choice as well. I'd always recommend when you're choosing a motor that you look for a motor that you can easily find the thrust tables for. This example on the left hand side, we'll talk about it more in another slide, but it shows you what the voltages are that the motor supports, it shows you what the props are that you should be using for those particular voltages, shows you how much current it's going to pull, and we're going to need to know that to pick an ESC, and it also shows you things like the actual thrust it's going to produce as well. Now a quadcopter that's built up like this is probably going to weigh 400, 500 grams by the time we stuck a battery on it as well. So any motor that's producing more than about 800 grams of thrust, but bear in mind we're going to have four of these things, is going to be easily enough to make this quadcopter a nice nimble little beastie. Now it used to be that 2205 motors were very much the default and I've made loads of models on the channel with 2205 2300 kV motors. I think they're a perfect choice for a beginner. Probably going to use something a little bit different on here and I'll explain why in a moment. But I for a first build will probably go for a 2205 or 2206 size motor running anything from 2300 to 2450 kV. So let's look at the specific motor I've got here and why I'm interested. Now this is a 2700 kV motor, it's a race star motor and it'll pull 31 amps on a 3S LiPo and 41 and a half amps on a 4S LiPo. So if we look at that table again, you can see here it's talking about the fact it's the motor supports 3S to 6S but for the motor that we're interested in, which is the 2700 kV version, and there are three versions of this motor around, uh, the 2700 kV version will only support 3S and 4S batteries. And you can see here that although the prop is the same, and we're going to use that size prop, so that's a 5 inch prop with a 4.5 inch pitch, that's what that 5045 means. We can see that if we go from a 3S battery, which is the 11.1 volts, to a 4S battery, which is the 14.8 volts in that chart, um, we get a whacking increase. We get a nearly 40% increase in the amount of thrust or pull, as it's called, in that chart. But the load current, the amps at 100% throttle that that motor and prop are going to pull, it jumps by a whopping 10 amps. So we always need to use an ESC that's got a higher rating than the motor. So if I wanted to use a 4S battery with this particular motor, then I'm going to have to pick an ESC that's got a higher amp rating than 41.5 amps, so probably something like a 45 amp ESC. If I wanted to use a 3S battery on my model, which is actually probably what I'm going to do here, although most people build quadcopters these days for 4S, but again, we'll come on to that in a second, uh, I, I would need a 35 amp ESC because it's only going to pull 31.2 amps maximum. Now the thing that I'm really interested here and the reason that I'm going to actually use a 3S battery with this motor is if you look on the right hand side of the chart where it says efficiency, the most efficient prop and motor combo is actually with this 2700 kV motor using a 3S battery with a 5 inch by 4.5 inch pitch prop or a 5045 prop and it's 3 grams per watt and I've made loads of 4S LiPo powered models but I actually want this one to go on 3S so I'm going to actually use a 3S battery on this so because I know I'm going to use a 3S pack I only need a 35 amp ESC. Now if I want to use a 4S 
battery on this, which is a far more typical choice for a modern quadcopter, then I'd have to find an ESC that would support up to 45 amps. So let's finish talking about the ESC and talk about then choosing one, because now we have a rough idea of what kind of ESC that we need. Again, I choose an ESC that has good reviews that people tend to like and appears to work well. Try and pick one that has about 10 to 20% more capacity in amps than the motor that it's going to be running. Now, this confuses some people because they're worried that what you're doing is it's going to try and force more amps through the motor than it can handle, and that's not the way it works. It just means that as the motor pulls more and more amps as you're increasing the throttle, the ESC can handle that and it can supply that with ease. Having a higher rating in the ESC means that even if you do fly for periods at 100% throttle, the ESC isn't going to be overloaded. These days I choose an ESC with BL Heli or BL Heli 32 support. They're easy to set up and work great. There's a little application that you can use on your PC to reverse motors. So you don't have to worry about getting wires the wrong way around when you're connecting the wires from the motor to the ESC. Two other options to think about when you're thinking about ESCs. They can either be put out on the arms, as I've done with a couple of builds. Uh, that tends to be very much the way that freestyle quads are built. It means that they're very much out there in the airflow. They're potentially in a place where they could get damaged if there was a prop strike, i.e. the prop was damaged and kind of hit the arm. But it does also mean that if one of the ESCs is damaged in a crash, you can just replace it with like for like, and you don't have to replace any other components. But the nice thing here is the Hollybro Kakute is available with this 4-in-1 ESC underneath, and these ESCs are 35 amps, which is what I'm after. So these will go inside the model, so the only things run running along the arms will actually be the motor wires themselves. These are BL Heli 32 ESCs, so they'll work perfectly too. Last thing I'll mention about ESCs is you'll tend to find that they talk about constant current and burst current. And what that's talking about is the constant current is the current that you can pull continuously without causing the ESC to overheat and fail. And the burst current is a higher current that you can pull for short periods of time. So for the 4S version of this model, if I wanted to run 4S, if you remember, it was 41.5 amps. I could probably get away with an ESC that supports 40 amps and will burst up to 45 amps if I'm only going to be blipping the 100% throttle for very limited periods of time. But if I wanted for the security of being able to fly the model however I wanted without worrying about overstressing an ESC, I'd get a 45 amp ESC. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are trying to figure out what you want to choose. Now we have chosen our flight controller, we've got the motor here, and we also know what ESCs we're going to put together. In the next video, join me, we'll talk about the FPV gear, we'll talk about cameras, video transmitters, and the FPV antennas as well. And then we'll also spend a little bit of time talking about radio gear choices and what you need to be looking at for a nice, simple build. So join me in that next video, and then once we've got that underway, we can get the soldering iron and the other tools out and actually start building. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.